So hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Sunny, your host, and today we are going to talk about data types in Python. So data types is actually one of the most important concept of or uh, part of any programming language because ultimately what we have to deal with is uh, we have to deal with data only, right? And there could be different type of data. So it could be whether you are a web developer, whether you are any kind of developer, or if you are even in data science, so ultimately we have to process data. We have to deal with data. We have to perform operations on the data. And for that, we have to understand what kind of data we have. So as you can see on your screen, these are the, some of the readily available data types which are already there in python and there are some more which are slightly advanced so i have only mentioned which we are going to use more frequently here so before we jump into into directly into their uh, like applications or their operations and uh, their different features so i want to show you that all around you if you carefully observe so you will see different type of data or whether it could be your phone or if it is your, uh, let's say, an e-commerce website where where you are doing some purchase. So there also there are different type of data is available. And even in your school life, like if you just look at your school life, your school records, your mark sheet, that is also a different kind of data. So let me first of all show you those examples so that it will be very crystal clear to all of you that what are data and what are data types. And then we will do the coding part of it and by going through these example you will start seeing these patterns these different type of data types all over the places okay so let's start with the lecture so let's first of all start talking about the most generic type of data types that is like that exist almost all over the like all over the internet or most of your application and even your phones so we will talk about integer float value first and then string type so string is normally all the textual data that you see and then we have numeric types that is integer and float values so let's first of all start with an example of your school records so normally in school what happens like each student has their own they have their enrollment number which is a unique number for each student so let's call that as we have enrollment number which is a kind of id that is being assigned to you so it could be any number. So it could be, let's say one, two, three, four. Then we have even in each class, we have roll number as well. That is again a type of integer. So let's say 12. Then we like the school record have your name as well associated with this enrollment number and roll, roll number. So let's say I have my name. So Sunny is the name. So that is again a textual data. And then apart from that, we have a, most of the students will be having at least five subjects. So we have five subjects. And at the end, what happens? Like you get marks in all these five subjects. So these marks will be again what? This. So this here is an example of this is an integer. This is again an integer. And here we have this as a string or text. Then the name of the subjects here are again string. Okay. Then we have the marks. All those marks will be normally marks are not always integer value, right? So sometimes you get half marks. And so because of that, you will get marks in float values. So this is an example of float values. So similarly, there will be multiple students. So let's say this is the student number one. So similarly, you will have other students as well. So you will have different set of records and each record has a different data type, right? So enrollment number is integer and so on. Now, based on these marks, what happens? We try to sort the students like who has got the maximum marks, right? So in that case, we will have marks of, let's say, student one and then so on to let's say n number of students are there so what we do is we try to take those marks and we try to sort them out that means from highest to lowest and then what we do we try to perf give the ranking to the students so what we are doing ultimately we are trying to perform some sort of an operation on what on these numbers and what these numbers are as of now these marks could be it could be in percentage let's say if you calculate percentage so that is also going to be a float value right so what we are doing we are Ultimately, what we are doing, we are performing some operation and what happens, let's say if you perform ranking. So what you're doing is like to the top rankers, you are, uh, let's say first ranker or the first rank. When you say first rank, so first rank is what it is kind of string value. And to this string value, what you do, uh, we have, uh, we assign a name, let's say Sunny and this to this name, we have the marks of the student. So that is again a float value. So this is the first example of 
data types like what kind of data could be available and what are their types now let me also show you a example that you can recall as well so if you can remember we used to get mark sheet like this right whenever we used to get the uh, exam of 10th class or stand uh, 10th standard so we used to get mark sheet like this whenever we used to enter the roll numbers and then we used to get some this sample mark sheet so this is a sample mark sheet here so here you can see there is a roll number right that is of type integer then we have this all of these values which is considered as string if you want to create a new data type or custom data type so the calendar can also be a kind of data type but as of now we have we can even consider them that also as a string as of now we have marks right so these marks are what these marks are again of type integer then we have grades so you can see these these grades these grades can be a kind of string now also here if you see the name of the subject so that is also a string so in this way you can see this data was always there around you so in a similar way you can think of there are so many number of students right so they have their uh, so in this way the data is arranged for all of them right and each data has its own type and their own way of storage as well like why why we define these type of data or, or the type of data because each data will have a different type of storage that means normally let's say if i talk about numbers right so numbers can easily be stored into less number of space memory space but if i talk about character or let's say if i talk about text data which is which can have uh, let's say let's say if i talk about simple sentence sentence can have multiple values or multiple words so each word can have a can uh, like can take different amount of space right so that is why it is even mandatory to specify the data type or manage these different type of data types because they have their own memory needs now i hope the at least you are able to understand what is integer float and string value that is the most commonly used and it will be available almost everywhere now let's talk about the these sequence as well like another category that is sequence so we, let's talk about list and tuple so normally what happens like list if i talk about list value so let's say if you have these subject so you can arrange those subject as a list that means let's say if i talk about english then we have like maths science and so on so this is called as list so this is called as list of subjects so sometimes people also generally ask right in like what are your list of subjects so that's an example of list now let's say if i talk about tuple so what tuple means is it's a special kind of data structure or inbuilt data structure in python which again it can be arranged like this only let's say you can again have same english maths and so but it has some special property that means let's say if you once you assign values into this tuple so you cannot again change it but in list it is variable it can change okay so that is the main difference between list and tuple but you will find uh, we will talk about them in more detail in the later lectures why because they deserve their own uh, own class or you know own lecture because they have so many things to talk about now so this is the another two data structure that we have discussed just now so in a similar fashion let's talk about dictionary as well what is a dictionary so dictionary is nothing but it's a like if i talk about english dictionary so what english dictionary contains it contains word and meaning right if i talk about dictionary so dictionary is nothing but if i talk about simple example as english dictionary so it has what it has words and their meaning so in a similar way in python also we have dictionary data type which is having a key value pair that means key means it could be anything it could be word and value it's what is its value so that is how the data is arranged so there could be if let's say if there are more than one value or one key value pair so you can have key one and value one and so on so in order to understand this with respect to the example that we have taken so if you observe carefully carefully here so you can consider this also as a dictionary here so what is this means this is nothing but this is key and what are its values these are its values so key here is roll number so roll number of student is this one two three two nine and that is its value so that is again a different kind of arrangement that we need sometime right we will see one more example in amazon so that it will become more clear but as of now i hope you have got the idea that what is dictionary in in python and we will also see as a code example as well so this is another data type right 
now we have uh, one more data type that is called as set so set means again it's a if you just look at its uh, definition so it is called as unique collection of items okay so it's a unique collection of items so let me give you one example here so let's say if you have uh, let's say if i talk about school example only so we have let's say there are multiple let's say these are the percentage of marks that student has achieved so let's say 95 90 again 95 and so on let's say 70 here so what i did just now created this is a list of marks that student have so if i ask you that okay how many of them what are the unique marks out of these list that student contains so what will happen i will just convert this into set so i will create a set i will only take the unique values out of it so what i will do so you can see there are two times 90 has appeared here so i will only take 90 ones similarly 95 i will only take ones and so on so this becomes what this becomes an example of set so what i'm trying to identify i'm trying to identify that what are the unique marks that students have achieved so i hope that clarifies what set is it's just nothing but we are trying to only find out the unique values out of some collection of item right so that is what set means again set we will study separately in very detail because this is again a special data type which exists in python which can help you in a lot of ways when we will be solving some problems so that clears the set part now let's talk about the boolean so if you just look into this result at the bottom which says pass so why it says pass that if i qualify certain percentage of marks so we can say the student is pass otherwise we say it fail so when this kind of condition arrives right when this kind of condition arrives so we can say that let's say if pass that means if the student is pass so it can have its value as true that means if the student is pass so we can say that it is true if the student has failed so we can even call it as a false that this is a false statement or the student did not pass so that is called as not pass or false so this kind of values are called as boolean okay and this will be very useful when we will be studying the conditional statements so there it will be very useful so that's the example of boolean and then if i talk about the none type so none type that is the end so null values or none type means that if there is a, there are certain values which can be uh, kept vacant for some students or there if they provide those information so we can keep it that means if there is an absence of a value or but still we have to uh, fill those value with some value so that we can can we, we call it as a none type or n a not sometimes we write it in forms as well right not applicable so in that case we just fill this with n a so in the same way in python we have a null data type or none type so one example i could give you with respect to this mark sheet is sometimes what happens people have their uh, some optional subject okay so let's talk about some optional subject or not if if not optional so if you can remember some subject have practicals and some do not have practicals so let's say if i talk about science so science has its practical marks as well but if i talk about uh, maybe mathematics so maths normally does not have any practical marks so normally i think it used to be around 75 marks was uh, theory marks and then in practical we used to get let's say 25 marks so out of 25 we will get 25 and 75 to 75 so in this way the total overall marks used to get calculated that is out of 100 so whenever let's say if uh, in this way if i try to arrange this marks for all the subjects so you will see that most of the subjects will not be having practical uh, practical marks so what we can uh, fill that value as that this value is empty value or this is a none value or null value so that is an example of null data type so i hope you can relate it with uh, that what these data types are here now we are left with the last data type that is the complex data type so complex data type i if you can remember so we used to study in uh, i think in 10th standard or maybe 11th standard so what is complex number means is let's say if you have x value normally it is represented as z or z is equals to let's say uh, 4 plus 3j we used to represent some numbers like that okay where this is called as imaginary part of it and this is called as real part of the number and if we want to represent this so what how we will represent so we will have these two axes one axis will be called as real axis that is your x axis and then y axis will be called as imaginary axis and here we have so since real axis on we have 4 
pointers and here on the imaginary axis we have three pointers so this will be the point 4 comma 3j and this will be the representation of this complex number so this complex numbers are again it will it is a very special data type which normally you will not find a use case in general day-to-day -day life but if you are a mathematician or if you are a like researchers who want to use python for complex numbers so yes there is a provision you can use this inbuilt data type which is already there so we will see some operation on this as well in practical session but as of now i hope you have got the idea of at least all of these data type now let's do one more observation and that observation will be in um, we will take an example of e-commerce website that is amazon okay so here we are on the amazon website and by the way i'm not promoting any product here but i just wanted to show you examples like how you can observe the various kind of data set in a real life example so let's say if i search about one of the books let's say this one hands-on machine learning scikit learn so when you click on this and when you search about it so you can see that it has it has started giving you some results and if you just look at these so all this is full of data right let me make you identify that what kind of data we have so when you see a list of data here so these data that you see on your screen so if you observe this is text okay all of them are here text then we have the rating of that is 4.7 so that is rating is again it's a float value so that is called as so let me write here so this is a string data type this here is float data type and if you just look at this price also so that is 3000 so there is no decimal value so you can think of this as an integer data type right and if you try to observe this overall that means if i scroll down here so what you get you got a list of books right which is related to this text that i searched so these are called so this is a type of what list data type so this is list of these books that i searched for now it is even also recommending some books which is on the top so that is also a list of books that it is uh, that is it is recommending now let's try to open this into a first book on in a next tab now here you can see that we have a book title we have an author of that book and if i just click on the let's say let's say if i want to read more about this so we have this information that we have isbn number we have isbn 13 and so on so this is again some textual information so you can consider them into a text data itself but if you just look at the if you click on the more information so let's say if you scroll down again so here you see product details so in product details if you just observe here carefully so this is also a type of what this is a dictionary data type so it's a dictionary data type how it is arranged as a dictionary so if you can see here this is a key value pair so key is that is who is the publisher so this is a publisher so that is its value what is the language of this so that is a key is language and value is english key is paperback value is 864 pages so here i hope you have got the idea of dictionary data list of information so now let's look into the reviews so if i go to reviews so these are called as list of reviews right so and this this is again what it is again of type string data type and if i observe them as a collection so it will be of type what it will be of type list so you can see almost all the kind of data type that i have just defined is available in some sort of form now there is one more data which is left that is called as your boolean data type so i will give you one example of that as well here so if you when you search for the first time here so when i on the left hand side you can see delivery day if i click on get it today so what i did when i clicked on get it today it made it it became blue tick here and it is it has changed the outcome outcome here so what is happening there is this is called as checkbox so checkbox is a representation it is easier representation as a as a general user but as a programmer if you think about it so when i clicked on that so what happened is i made its value from true to false so from false to true actually when it is unticked okay when it is unticked so it is of type false so right now it is in false condition and when i click a tick on this so then it becomes this is becomes a true condition so this is an example of what this is an example of boolean data type so like this these kind of things are already available all around you you just have to start making an observation 
So if you are increasing your observation like this, it will be even easier for you to write good programs and I will say better programs and your understanding of our data types will increase. So that's what I wanted to show you with these two examples of one example of school days so that you can relate it very easily what data type is and this one. So data types are all around us. And now I hope you have got the at least the final idea about that or the generic idea about what are data types. So now let's do some hands-on session on data types. So for this, we will let, we will take some examples. So first data type is normally integer that we have discussed. All right, let me paste here. So let's talk about one by one. So we will talk about this example that is string example. So let's say if we talk about the name, let's say if I have a name Sunny, and if I have to check that what is the data type of this variable, so I will simply write print and then I will write type of type type is again an inbuilt uh, function in python so if i run this so you will see that actually i did not save it and let me run it again so you can see it is going to print you class as string so let me also keep on printing the value of the variables that i'm going to use so that it will be very clear for all of you that what is these outcome coming up so sunny and it is of data type string so in a same similar way if i take a sentence also so let's say sentence sunny is a lifelong student so let's say this is a sentence and if i again run this so you will see that it is also of a type string so string here means that even let's say if you take one character of it so let's say if i take one character just s so still the data type will remain same as a string and also apart from that if i take a number here that means let's say if I write in this fashion, one, two, three, four, but in double quotes or single quotes also will be applicable. So let me also take that example of single quote as well. Otherwise it will be confusing for some of the people. So what I'm trying to say here is that if I take single quote instead of double quote, or let's change this to single quote example. If I run this, so all of this will be even single this and single quote example. So that is also of type string. And when I talked about number, so number, if it is written into single or double quotes so that is also will be considered as string only so there will be no difference and even let's let me change this to number okay or x simply x i can use and in the same way if i take even if i take decimal values here so although it appears to us that it is 12.34 but since it is in double quotes so the type will remain as string str so that is a quick example of string now uh in the upcoming lectures, we will also discuss more about string, specifically about string because it has some inbuilt method which will be very useful in uh, in solving the problems. So, but as of now, since it's an introductory session for data types, so that's why we are covering the very basics of it. Now, so that completes as of now the introduction to data type string. So now let's take an example of integer here. So integer data type is nothing but Let's take this itself. And if I remove the double quotes, so you can see the representation also changes. There is a different color code for integers, right? And if I now try to print this, but before I print that, I will simply comment this out so that we can only get the this result. And now let's try to run it. So you will see now it is treating this as an integer. Now integer can be any of any type. It could be positive, it could be negative. Still, it will be an integer. And even if it is, let's say, zero also, still it will be an integer. So let's see. So you can see that for one, two, three, four, it is integer. For this, also integer. And for even zero, it is integer. So just like integer, we have now float data type. So let me comment this out and let's discuss the float data type. So in case of float, we will have the same, let's take the same numbers, but we will involve decimal values here. So instead of 12, we can write this, let's say 12.34 minus 12.34 and zero instead of zero we can simply write 0, 0.0 so now if i run this so you will see now their data type has changed to float because of the involvement of decimal values now let's talk about the complex numbers but before that let me comment this out so in case of complex numbers so let's say if we have value of z that is let's say one plus two j and if i print the value of this z and also the type of z so you can see that is representing one plus two j and type is complex numbers and as i told you that it also have real part and imaginary part so you can even print that separately so let's say if i want to print you can see that i'm using the f string now so real part of z is so i will take the z value as this way and that is equals to z dot real in a same way if i want to print the imaginary part of it the imaginary part of for that we have z dot 
image or im image and now if i run it so you can see it is printing the real and imaginary part of both of them so that was an example or introduction to complex numbers next let's take an example of sequence data that is list and tuple so list data type as i told you it's a the representation of this will be let's say if i write x is equals to let's say list of number one two three four till ten so if i print the value of x as well as the type of x so if i now run it so it will be of type list so that is a list data type and in a similar way if i change it to tuple so for that what i have to do i will simply replace the instead of square bracket i will use this and if i run this so it, you can see that change it has changed to tuple so the major use case of them again we will have a dedicated session for all of them like even for list and tuple because they are very important data types and they will be very useful when we will be doing more problem statement later in this course but as of now at least you have got that what they represent and how you can represent them in python now in a similar way let's also take an example of set as well so in order to represent set what you have to do is instead of replace replace this with a curly braces so now if i run this so you will see that the last part is now changed to set now let me also give you one more sample here so let's say if i have this example and i have some repetitive elements let's say i repeat line multiple times okay and now if i run this so you will see that it is still going to print as 1 to 10 why it will only take the unique values of it so that's the demo of set so in a similar way let's take an example of boolean as well as none type as well so let's say if we have x is equals to true if i take the print of its type and its value and in a similar way i will also check for false value as well and let's see the type and the values so if i run this so you can see if the first value is true another one is false and the data type is boolean in the same way let's take the last example of none that is none data type so it will be is equals none so that is how we represent none in python or null values in python and if i now run it so you can see the last value is of type none type so that was a quick examples of all the common data types that i that i was talking about but these are some generic examples right so some of you might be thinking that okay how we can do the same for the example that i have taken initially so let's start those examples so that it will be uh, these data types will be reinforced into your memory so let's take some real world example of let's say integer type so as i was giving you some examples of sc school data right so we had name of the student so i will simply write the variable as name of student that will be is equals to let's say sunny so the type of this will be i will also mention the type here okay so don't worry so just below that i will just mention the type as well so here we have number of student and sorry name of student and so now just like that we have what we have a roll number of the student so roll number and it will be let's say one two three or one two let's say so roll number is again it's an example of an integer data type now just like roll number we have what we have let's say percentage of the student or percentage of marks so let's say the student has got maybe maybe 75 percent so 75 point maybe let's say two percent so 75.2 this becomes what this becomes a example of float value so let's run this also so here you can see we have sunny that is string then we have uh, the roll number then we have the percentage of marks so now as i told you that this could be represented as as a dictionary as well so so let me show you that okay how we can represent this as a dictionary so we have the name of student so maybe i will say uh, student data or student one data so this we are talking about just one single student's data so we can represent the same thing with a dictionary data type so here what i will do i will simply pick so it's going to be a key value pair so name of student will be in this example is sunny then we have comma and then we will go for the roll number value so roll number so 12 so let me put this into double quotes then we have the percentage of marks so in this case it was 75.2 so now if i check the data type of this let me uncomment this and run the so you can see now that we have name of student that is how the data will be presented and that data type is dictionary so this covers the example of a dictionary data type so in this way we can have multiple students having different different like different name of uh, name of student different roll number or different marks so just like that we can also get the let's say if you want to represent the subjects so i will say here list of subjects so list of subjects will be let's say english maths science so this is how you represent the subject names you can even write in this way like you can go for the next line by here and we can arrange them as this 
or you can keep them into the same line as well so this will be list of subjects now if i want to check again for the list of subjects so i will simply paste here and let's try to run this so here you can see it's an example of list data type in a similar way we can also see that if the student is pass or not so pass or let's write passing status so let's say it's true and if i print the data type of it so you can see it is a boolean or bool data type and if i change this to false also so still you will see that it is the same boolean data type now just like that let's say if we have practical marks maybe some uh, subjects which doesn't have practical marks so let's say uh, practical marks in maybe english so as you know that uh, normally english will not have any practical sessions like or lab sessions i will say so we can define this as a none type or none not applicable and if i try to print its data type so you will find that it is of type none so this covers the almost all the example of data types let's take similar example into the e-commerce website example so here uh, if you talk about the integer or so so integer value can contains let's say cost of product so maybe let's say 3000 so the book example that i gave you and then we have let's say name of product this is an example of string data type okay in a same way we have let's say if i talk about one day delivery is available or not so one day delivery so i will say that it's false that it is not available one day delivery right we were doing the same we were checking the same example in the same way we can ask that what is the rating of the product so rating of the product will be let's say it is 4.7 if i remember it was like that only 4.7 stars then if i talk about so this is again it's an example of float value next is let's say let's say talk about the reviews of the product so reviews of product so if i talk about reviews of product so normally it can be represented as a list of reviews so we will have a reviewer one so who will be talking about let's say the product is book is good then some of them will review as book is maybe average book is maybe excellent so in this way there could be multiple reviews by the people so that is an example of list data type next the same information can be represented as a dictionary as well so let's try to write this as an example of dictionary let's call it as a product information and we will use two curly braces to represent the same information as a dictionary so what i will do i will just cut paste here and these variable names will become now keys for it and the values at the end will have commas here so this will become a dictionary a product information so if you i will leave this uh, to check their data type as an exercise for all of you so you can use print and see that okay what is the data type of each one of it so i hope i was able to cover all the data types here with two different example so we have seen theory cases as well as we have seen their practical use cases as well so in a similar way i will ask you to start observing around yourself so you will find out various kind of data you will also find out different types of data so right now as you saw in the, in the last example where i have taken example of a dictionary but if you see so this dictionary also contains other data type as well so we can also call this as a like nesting of data types so we will talk about this in a later lectures so in a similar fashion we also sometimes get derived data types that means the data types which is derived from or which is created by using the other fundamental data types so what we have covered till now is a fundamental all 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 of them are example of a fundamental data types which are usually exist in a, in their natural form but sometimes we have to represent the same data type into a derived data types let's say if i simple example if i can give you is of uh, let's say date so date can have various forms so if i talk about today let's say if today, today is uh, 21st so 21st is what it is an integer or 21 it is an integer but 21st august so august becomes what august is it becomes a string right so 21 if i want to separately if i want to represent 20 for 21 august 2023 so if this is a date so i can represent 21 as a string august as sorry 21 as an integer august as a string and then i can represent the year as an integer but if i want to create a derived data type so let's say date is a data type so it will be derived from the by using these two data types or fundamental data types so we will uh, cover all of this later in the upcoming lectures but as of now i hope you have got the clarity on what is data types so start observing okay around yourself see that what kind of data type exists and uh, till then uh, keep on learning and keep on exploring i will see you in the next lecture with a new topic thank you all mm -hmm.